I rise to ask question number 112 of 2015 put under my name. The question is addressed to the Minister for Employment, Productivity and Industrial Relations. We have had that the New Zealand seasonal worker scheme only targets the unemployed Fijian people in the rural sectors. Can the Minister advise the House on when the scheme will be open to the unemployed Fijian people in urban area sectors? Thank you. Thank you. I invite the Honourable Minister for Employment, Productivity and Industrial Relations to have the floor. Madam uh, Speaker, the Acting Prime Minister, the Honourable uh, Attorney General, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, uh, Honourable Members, ladies and gentlemen. Madam Speaker, in answering the question, it is important that we understand and appreciate the current status of unemployment and the level of poverty within Fiji. The most recent uh, household income expenditure survey study that was conducted nationwide revealed that some positive developments that the poverty level in Fiji has fallen from about 35% in 2002 to about 31% in 2008. With the sustained positive annual economic growth rate of about 3 to 4% over the last four to five years, it is estimated that the percentage level of poverty has further declined. Madam Speaker, however, it is imperative to note that whilst the national poverty level has decreased with urban poverty, on the other hand, rural poverty has increased. Therefore, Madam Speaker, the important issue to be addressed in any national poverty alleviation policy is how rural poverty can be effectively reduced within the 31% identified in the Household Income Expenditure Survey. In this regard, Madam Speaker, the Ministry has therefore specifically targeted the rural communities and the young unemployed youths to work in both New Zealand and Australia under the recognised seasonal employment worker schemes. At the end of last year, Madam Speaker, on the 11th of December, we endorsed and signed a memorandum of understanding with the New Zealand Government, under which we have been able to send about 24 workers to work under this labour mobility arrangement as part of a 30 personnel pilot scheme. The remaining six personnel will leave for New Zealand very shortly. On the 17th of March this year, we signed a similar MOU with the Australian Government to enable us to send more workers to the Australian labour market under the Australian Seasonal Workers Scheme. Madam Speaker, the first four personnel to work under this arrangement will depart today. They are expected to work in Australia for about six months, similar to the duration of our workers who are working in New Zealand at the moment. Madam Speaker, within the Ministry, the staff and I have set some very stringent set of selection criteria and procedures for all Fijians who wish to participate under these schemes because we want to increase the number of our personnel who could be employed under these schemes. Our ability to make more inroads and increase our level of participation will depend on how well our workers will be performing in New Zealand and Australia. Madam Speaker, as the Minister for Employment, I hope that our personnel would perform well in order that we can increase our quota in both countries. With this increase, Madam Speaker, Honourable Members of the House, we will then be able to extend the programme to include the recruitment of our urban unemployment. Thank you. Thank you. Supplementary question, the Honourable Senator Thank you, Madam Speaker. I thank the Honourable Minister for his explanation on the, on the seasonal work uh, scheme. And uh, I also raise this question on the background that uh, women are prudent financial managers in a family unit. And Madam Speaker, my question is, can the Honourable Minister explain what arrangements are in place to ensure the recruitment of women into this scheme so as to fulfil and actualise the government's uh, commitment and promises as captured under the roadmap and the Department of Women's uh, Plan of Action on the 30% quota towards the development and empowerment of women? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. The Honourable Minister for Employment, Productivity and Industrial Relations. Madam Speaker, Honourable uh, Members, 
in trying to answer the question, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for that, because government is very aware and very conscious of the fact that gender issues are important. Now, as a Minister for Employment, uh, we have been um, um, criticised for the way in which uh, the first 24 or 30 people have been selected to go down to New Zealand. Now, let me assure this House that the scheme is very much employer driven. The onus is on the employers to take their pick from a pool of ready employment personnel who have been selected under these criteria. Now, for the information of the House, the first 24 were all men. Now, the remaining six that I was referring to will be leaving very shortly, and I'm glad to report to this House that within that group, we have two women. <laughs> Madam Speaker, beggars can't be choosers. We have tried our best to tell our friends in New Zealand and Australia we'd like to send more women. So hopefully, you know, in future, we will be able to send more women. But as it is, when the employers come and take their pick, you know, we can only hope and pray that we can send more women. Thank you. Supplementary question. I give the floor to the Honourable Dr. Bingham Prasad. Can, can the Minister uh, inform the House whether he thinks that it will be appropriate to, Madam Speaker, review the criteria? Uh, while rural poverty might be slightly higher than urban poverty, I think the criteria really should be all those who are unemployed, whether they come from rural or urban. And that might open the, the field and the opportunity, uh, Madam Speaker, for, uh, for um, more people to be considered. Thank you. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Thank you. I'd like to, uh, to rise to answer the uh, question posed by uh, the Honourable uh, Bhima Prasad. For the information of the House, we have about 200 people who have been selected under these criteria in the ready employment pool. Out of that 200, we have about 56 women. There is no discrimination you know, in terms of you know, what we're trying to do in getting more people into the employment pool. The uh, recruitment policy of the Ministry is open to anyone. I would like to have more women come in. And hopefully, you know, we can send all of them down to New Zealand and Australia. But as it is, you know, about a quarter of the 200 I'm talking about are women. There is no uh, barrier for women coming in and joining the scheme. Thank you. I give the floor to uh, the Honourable Ratusela Namoro. Supplementary question, Madam Speaker. To the Honourable Minister, thank you so much for all the progresses that have been attained by your ministry up to now, after this was tabled to the Parliament last year. Just a question that I want to pose this morning is what sort of a monitoring, mon mon monitoring mechanism that your ministry has put in place to ensure that the agreement that was signed by both countries, New Zealand and Fiji, are not being abused by the uh, people that we've sent? Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, if I um, understand the uh, question um, that was posed by the Honourable Member, he's talking about you know, what sort of budgetary allocation has government provided to help the scheme. At the end of last year, uh, the Ministry was provided about $500,000 to um, kick off the scheme, and at the moment, you know, that should be enough to take us through, and I've been assured by the um, Honourable uh, Minister for Finance, should we run out of money, we can always come and ask for more. Thank you. Thank you. I give the floor to the Honourable Nico Noikulu. I'm, I'm totally happy that you are restricting it to the uh, rural area, because otherwise the villages will be empty. So you, you stick on to that. But uh, my question is, uh, we, are, we are told that the criteria for selection is that you pick the names from a box. But in the villages, you know, they are community-based, they would like to build a church or something, and they would like six or ten people from there. Would you consider changing your criteria in the future to take that into account? Thank you, Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, I'd like to thank the Honourable Member for the question. The uh, selection criteria that, was, that he's referring to only apply to the first 30 uh, pilot scheme workers. At the moment, that has been done. It is open for everybody. Thank you. Thank you.